What's up, Washed Up Walk Ons fans? We're back for another episode. It is Floyd of Rosedale week. And the boys on this podcast carried that trophy out of the stadium several times. Several times. Couple questions about the Floyd of Rosedale trophy uh, in our QA uh, session of the episode tonight. We'll get there in a minute. Drake is joining us from the top of a parking ramp of a casino in beautiful Arizona. We were looking at I should, these- <clears throat> In about a half hour, I'll get out of my car and I'll turn yeah. the camera around so that you guys can see the, the sunset behind Camelback. It's yeah. pretty It's pretty beautiful. For, for those on the YouTube version that, that watch it back, which first of all, if you're not subscribed, over half of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're listening to this right now and you don't have a YouTube channel, quickly create one and subscribe. We are 200 and like four subscribers away from a thousand subscribers, which means we could officially be YouTube partners. Um, that would be cool. That'd be another cool step for the washed up, for the washed up walk-ons. Uh, but yeah, YouTube version. Uh, Arizona casino, uh, Kevin is joining us. I presumably he was making a sandwich. So he was in his kitchen, which I got to be a part of. I got to, I got to, got to visit Kevin this weekend after the game. Uh, beautiful, beautiful place. New, uh, new development. And, uh, Can we talk about how rich Kevin is. He's, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'd call him rich. I, he's fucking on his way, but, um, he doesn't live in a in a bad spot. I'll tell you that. Doesn't How cool in- and futuristic are the houses around him? It's so yeah. the The neighborhood's really cool, and he lives. The street he lives on is like the entrance of the neighborhood, and so I didn't get to see like a whole lot of it. But just the few houses like on the edge of the neighborhood, they all had like their own style, very modern, lots of stonework. Like, Kev, you really got it going on out there. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm just enjoying my ham sandwich right now. So, ham sandwich <laughs> lives in that neighborhood. You know why? Eating a ham sandwich. Uh, um, hey, it's Floyd week. Okay, it's, it's Floyd week, bro. Week. You got to eat ham on Floyd oh, week. Oh, shit. I didn't even connect it. Uh, okay, Come true. On, dude. You're the host of this podcast, and you're the slowest one. I opened it up with the Floyd talk. Speaking of, saw the, saw the picture on Facebook. Kim and Pete, of course, they're out in full force. Uh, they've got, I miss the them so much. Yeah, dude. Same. And, and their food, they're out in full force at the complex tonight, serving up, um, roast pig. I'm not actually sure what they're serving, but they've got the pig with the apple in his mouth. Uh, Pete's wearing the Floyd shirt. Like they go all out. All right. Pete and and this from- is a great opportunity to tell you guys to, uh, get Gray's takeout, please. And thank you. Unofficial sponsor, local businesses, unofficial sponsor of the podcast, uh, forever and ever. Gray's, Pete and Kim, best people on earth. Those of you who have listened in the last couple episodes, you'll know that uh, we've mentioned a couple of Patreon shout outs. I don't know what's happening with the Patreon. I must have the new offerings and what I've been doing. Um, you know, I posted a Tory Taylor 25 minute video breakdown yesterday and people like in the direct messages were like, oh my God, your breakdown to Tory Taylor. Um, I'm glad some people like the special teams nerd out on that stuff. Uh, We've got some more patrons to shout out, and I don't even remember where we were last episode. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go back. You're a bad host, dude. You're a bad I'm, host. I'm horrible, dude. Uh, uh, where were we? Alex, Scott, Daniel, Jim, Austin, Mike, Bob, Blake, Jeffrey, Eli, Aaron, Stephen. Um, I forgot this one guy's name. He didn't use his real name on the profile, but um, his profile name is Golden Bolt. David, David, Jeff, and Joel. Some of you, so the, those last two, Jeff and Joel, in the last day have joined as as Patreon subscribers, enjoying all of the perks over there. Um, the Patreon has really grown, and the offerings have really grown. Um, as you guys know, we don't make any mo- real money off this podcast. Everything that we make through the Patreon, everything that we make through the holiday drop that we just did, um, the the Hawks by a million t-shirts that are always available at Hawks by million.com or the washed up walk-ons.com. All of that money goes right back into the podcast, right back into creating new merchandise. Um, we've actually built up some to where we can actually probably stock more merch items. Uh, it, it, it's, 
it all goes back in so that we can make this better and uh, I can spend a little bit more time and justify that time on the back end. So uh, you guys are incredible. So thank you, patrons. Um, I am thinking about the Gray's food, like the Gray's meal and those, God, those soft Hawaiian sweet rolls, son of a bitch. Um, I got to give you a lot of credit there for that little, that little monologue spiel you gave. That sounded really professional. Like from where we started talking mad shit about just whatever to now you, you know, giving people their proper praises and things like that. Well done. I had to come back. You know, you you get called out. You gotta, you gotta lay down the law. Uh, Big 10 news. There will be no Maryland big uh, Ohio state game this week, Maryland pausing team activities for the time being. I saw Lucy uh, Rodine tweeted. That's probably a good decision. Maryland. (laughs) I'll Uh, tell you what though. Talia (laughs) Tagovailoa is a real, real good player. Like shocker to his brother's good, but he's really good. Let me check the stats actually. Cause I have the big 10 stats pulled up as far as passing goes. Rutgers. eh, Not great. They're, Pass it for 176 yards a game. I think Talia oh, Maryland, in I the mean. last Maryland I think Talia in the past couple of weeks is leading the Big Ten. Yeah, Maryland passes for 273 um, a game, which is pretty good. That is sixth in the Big Ten, so upper half. Iowa, for reference, is passing for 220 a game. Um, and yeah, that I mean, if he's I mean, Tua is his brother, and and I'm real pissed at Tua. Uh, because he, well, Drake, you probably are too. You took the dude. Come on, how did he go have have polar opposite games in week one and week two of his career? Looked incredible, honestly. Looked really good. Uh, led the doll, uh, led the Dolphins to a 34 31 win over the Cardinals, I believe, this weekend. Uh, Drake's one of Drake's picks was the Cardinals minus two or three and a half, so he ruined that. Um, Speaking of the wash up walk ons picks, let's update you now that the NFL games for the week are over. Tyler, Dude, I'm hurting right now. I'm yeah, in negatives. I, I went great in the NFL. Uh, again, the Army uh, Air Force game was canceled, so I only had three picks. Um, Packers crushed Vikings. I mean, Dalvin Cook, dear Lord. I've got him on my fantasy team, and uh, just thank you to that guy. Uh, so those two crushed. My one pick was Georgia and Florida beat them. So I was two and one for the week. That brings me to 11 and 16. Fade Kluver, hashtag 2020. Uh, that one continues. Drake is 11 and 12 after going one and two in the NFL for it the week. It feels really bad, dude. I start off like seven and 10 or yeah. seven and three or something like that. Like it just feels bad. Yep. Kevin still even 14 and 14. So 50% for the official awards winner picks. Um, If you guys haven't, I don't know if you guys have looked, but as I talk here, make sure you got your picks for the end of the podcast. And uh, I will start if I need to, to give you guys time on that. As we move forward, we're going to get to some, uh, some question and answer, a little breakdown on the Minnesota Gophers, the battle for Floyd. This is uh, Kevin's one of Kevin's favorite games. If I'm not mistaken, is that right, Kev? Uh, definitely one of my favorite games, uh, by far my favorite trophy. Favorite trophy. Yeah. We've been over that. Yep. Floyd is your favorite trophy. It's a heavy trophy. Um, so one of the it's a girthy uh, little pig, man, it's a, it's a thick little girthy pig. Uh, it, it's not the biggest trophy, but it's heavy. The thing is dense. And someone asked the question, if Keith could hoist it over his head by himself, I'm going to go with no. Um, I think it weighs 90. I'm going to go with yes because we need to give Keith more credit than we're giving him right now because the dude in the weight room, don't care what he looks like, kind of a powerhouse. Dude, if his if arms are a powerhouse though, for being 112 pounds, but he can squat over 400, dude. Yes, that but trophy's it, only 90. His bench, his bench and his upper body. Uh, pre- like his pressing is not good. I do not. I, th- I believe the pig weighs 97 pounds or 99 pounds, just under a hundred. I think it's um, 98.3. I believe 98 exactly. pounds. And that is, I mean, a hundred pound dumbbell, not most, you know, a lot of people can't put that overhead, but the pig is even more weird because it's not evenly distributed weight. Um, And I- I've had that thing on my shoulder with, Boone Myers, I believe, is who I carried it out of the stadium with. 
It was heavy as hell, dude. Uh, I know that, Kevin, you have a sick picture with your brother carrying it out of uh, TCF. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's especially a lot heavier when you're the shorter of the two people. Yes, yes. So I, I, I know how you, how you felt that day. Dude, my neck. That's the I- Ward family's proudest picture. That 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 it picture. Is. My, my 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 dad fucking loved that picture. They have it all over their house. I would if it, yeah. You, you know those uh, at the banquet our senior year, those big banners that like sat up behind us on the stage. You mm. guys, you, the Ward family needs to get like a mural, of that size or bigger, painted of that picture, like in the, in in uh, your dad and mom's house. That would be fucking incredible. So you think he'd like that for a Christmas present? If you could somehow figure that out, like maybe order like the biggest fat head of that picture as possible or uh, yeah, something like that. I think he, I think he'd enjoy that a lot. Um, by the way, real quick, he listens note, to the pod though, unfortunately. Yeah, probably not. We suck. Um, uh, real quick note, the idea for the walk-ons to broadcast the toolbox game, the rusty toolbox game was one of the most well-received ideas from the fans. I got so many DMs and like tweets of, about that to our account. Like, what can we do to make this happen? And I just thought of if somehow, some way, someone actually wants to make that happen, it could be the greatest or worst uh, piece of uh, like broadcasting coverage that there ever was. <laughs> and I just imagine it going one way or the other. Um, but quite honestly, could be the best idea that you've ever had drake I think. that would be so much fun i always wanted to watch like the toolbox game in person I know. obviously we couldn't because like you know we were playing the next day yeah but yeah which is I honestly bullshit so though because what's a little what's a little night before entertainment for the boys yeah true um definitely nothing else to focus on uh minnesota the gophers expected to be Coming off of their season last year, even though the Hawks did take them down in Kinnick at night, don't come to Iowa City at night. Don't do it. Uh, 11 and 2, I believe, was their final record last year. Um, They lost to us and Wisconsin at the end of the year, I believe. Kevin, you could probably remember and check me on that. Um, And then they won their bowl game, I I think. Uh, Did they play Auburn? Did they beat Auburn? That bowl? is correct. They beat Auburn in the Outback Bowl. Okay. Yep. I thought so. That's such a good win, dude. It's a good win. That's an incredible win. Um. So eleven and two. Ex- high expectations coming in this year. PJ Fleck, fourth year. Haven't turned out the best performances. With and, and granted, again, COVID twenty twenty year. Does it? Does the year even matter? What's what is this year? Regardless, uh, started the year getting handled by Michigan who at the time was like, okay, Michigan's 1-0, handled Minnesota, maybe they're good. Since then has proven mm, maybe that's not the case. Um, Minnesota then went on to play, I don't know, and then I know that they, um, I know that, oh, they played Maryland? Lost to Maryland in overtime. By one point. point. Yep, by one point. And then last week they played. They rolled Illinois. Yeah, they played Illinois and beat them. So, um, interesting stats about Minnesota. All right. They have an ungodly amount of rushing yards. This Ibrahim running back, I mean. He's a beast, dude. Let, let's just let's just look at the numbers here. The top rushing team in the Big Ten is the Minnesota Gophers. They have 716 rushing yards through three games. 12 rushing touchdowns. They're averaging 238 yards per game. Dude, that is absolute insanity. 5.2 yards per carry. That is second in the Big Ten behind Maryland, which is interesting. Um, so their rushing numbers are, are really, really good. Um, on the other hand, defensively, they sit on the exact opposite of the league. They somehow are giving up one more yard than they're actually rushing for per game. They rush for 238. They give up 239 rush yards per game. Like what? I'm so confused. Um, That is really good news for an offense that just showed we can run the ball pretty well. If that's what we focus on. Yeah. For, for reference. um, So that defense, that Minnesota defense that gives up 7.3 yards per carry. 
they're they're giving up 73 percent of a first down every time the other team runs Ooh. the ball like Ooh. Ooh. dude that is bad bad um that defense is going to go up against Iowa's sixth best Big Ten rushing offense. Iowa is just under 500 yards total, averaging five per carry, seven rushing touchdowns. We run for 166 yards per game, which is pretty respectable. Um, Iowa defense rushing-wise, um, going up against that incredible rushing attack that Minnesota is, is touting, Iowa first in the Big Ten in rush defense. Av- giving up 2.6 yards per rush, only four touchdowns given up, just over 100 yards a game at 102. So the best rushing offense in the Big Ten going up against the best rush defense in the Big Ten isn't that exciting, man. Pretty standard, I think. I mean, uh, I think Minnesota has been giving up a lot of big plays, a lot of chunk yards, and – Iowa, I think you could probably count on our hand how many big plays that we've given up on uh, on defense. So just, I mean, just that one advantage last week. Iowa, yeah, Brady Ross, Ad- advantage Iowa. It um, feels like in our career, all we did was play incredible rushing teams with like some of the best running backs that the league has seen. But yeah. we always stood there with one of the best rushing defenses and just stood toe to toe. Like it's just such a standard Iowa matchup. Well, Every year you see like a few games in, it's like, okay, t- I actually think I saw a stat right before this podcast. Iowa has the best, best rushing defense in the country. in one of, in one of the statistics, I believe it might be that average 2.6 yards per carry. I don't know. Um, and it's just so standard. Like coach Parker turns out a great rushing defense every single year. It's incredible. Kevin, you were a part of that defense. Why do you think that is? He's probably chewing. No, oh, sorry. I was muted right there. Oh. Um, yeah, it just comes down to playing uh, basic fundamental football, playing within the defense, uh, making sure guys are in gaps. It's easy not to give up big runs if everyone does their job. So if you guys, if you have a good communication, get guys where they're supposed to be. Uh, it really limits the big runs, and that's when you see teams like average yards per rush go up. Mm-hmm. Is when they are giving up, you know, say somebody's out of their gap and they get gassed for twenty yards, or right. you know, someone misses a tackle on top of that, and then all of a sudden it's a touchdown. So, yeah, people being in the gaps, making tackles in the gaps, it's really, it's really not that hard of a concept. Right. It's difficult to execute sometimes. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Hoover, give me this stat real quick that I just thought of because we were talking about how in the early part of the season, we thought that it would be the most penalized team. Yeah. And turns out we played terrible for the first two games, had a ton of penalties. What were our penalty line or uh, what was our penalty line in the third game? Because yeah. we, the game just turned out so much different. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think the second game was very bad in penalties either. Um, yeah. So gosh, I can't even f- penalties. We're averaging 51 yards. I So, so have, obviously it's come down a lot because the yes. first game we had over 100 yards. I can tell you this. In the last two. I can tell you this. The uh, the first game we had 10 for 100. In the last two games, we've gotten nine for 55 yards. Okay. So, and I don't think a lot of them were in the third game because we were just in such positive – position mm-hmm. and we we're, we were just on top of things for the whole game yep. in fact i think i remember the th- one of the games was like three for 25 yards or 20 something like that so yeah um we've brought that down that that definitely is something that you have to look at um uh, um it's a good thing i mean you, you definitely don't want that number to go up uh they've taken care of it to some extent Averaging 50 yards a game in penalties, you know, it still probably could ask for a little less, but um, that 100 yard game is obviously uh, aiding in that, in that average. So the last two games, probably exactly what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to see the Hawks continue to be more disciplined. Um, let's move on to uh, some of the questions. Uh, one that didn't specifically come in on the, on the question that I, or on the tweet that I sent out, but this came in as a DM. 
um, from one of our big fans, Elena Hansen. She's I've talked with her multiple times. She's asked a couple of questions in the past. And I thought this was an actually incredible question that I've never really um, that I've never really considered. I, I don't know. It's, it struck something with me and it's something that it will be individual to each of us. She says, as a player, after a loss or win, you watch the film, then you move on. As a fan, we sit with the outcome for a whole week before the next game. Now that you aren't in the program anymore, is that a tough transition or are you still able to put a loss or win behind you immediately and move forward? And I, I just thought that was a very insightful question. I told her personally, and that I'd answer it on the podcast as well, as you guys think about what your answer would be. The, and Drake, for those on, watching the YouTube version or for those listening, I guess, he's showing the sunset of uh, Camelback. Pretty incredible scene out there. Definitely not Iowa. Um, I thought that the spe specialist position was actually uniquely um, in a spot to be all the way to the side of process something, move on, process something, move on. It's how you have to be as a snapper, kicker, punter. Uh, the job descri description is perfection. As a punter, you are expected to hit a high punt that gives your uh, coverage team a chance, keep it in spots that are not going to allow the returner to make something happen as a snapper you're expected to put it exactly on the dude's hip so that he doesn't have to worry about anything or on on the pats put it right out over that t and give him laces something that i sucked at um as a kicker you make the kick right it's a hundred or zero all or nothing and in that kind of environment you have to regardless of the situation or of the outcome of a specific rep you have to flush it and move on Keith misses a kick uh, last week versus Michigan State. Flush it, come back, kick another one. Now, we didn't end up getting another field goal, but he had to come out and kick more PATs. He has to forget about that rep. And I think that transferred over to um, games in general, not just reps, but entire games as I had to basically train myself to, oh, pick six, Amani Hooker starts the game off against Ohio State. Can't really get too excited about this because if I let the the fan inside of me, the excitement, the um, that emotion fill me, that affects like the the intricacies of trying to do special teams and be a specialist. So I, I got really good at suppressing that. Um, and I told Elena, I am just I mean, I mean I'm almost not attached to the wins or losses at all. Like I'm fine. Like we lost to Purdue that first week, and I was like, cool. I went and ate Mexican food for dinner. Didn't I wasn't even thinking about it. Like um, yeah, anymore. It doesn't really bother me either, but I, man, I uh, did not take losing very well while you were playing. Just, no. Yeah. Kevin, what about you? Uh, interesting question. Um, obviously we're not as invested in, in it as we once were. Yeah. Obviously still big fans of the program and everything, but I don't know. It's not something that you, you, you carry around for the whole week. Obviously, um, it's, it's the last thing you, when we're just talking Iowa football, it's the last thing you can reference. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It's not really, I, I can't even really um, compare the two being a fan being on the outside compared to being on the inside as far as the flush is move on mentality, because I mean, as a fan, like, I guess I, 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 I don't it's know. weird, I don't right? Know what I'm trying to say here. It's weird. Yeah. So here's what I, I've been asked this question in in a couple different ways, multiple like, times. Like, like it's not my job to. It's like not my job to move on. I don't it's, have to prepare for the next game. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yep. I, I, we know that as former players, that was our life. Like it, it is our job to worry about what happened, fix it, move on, make it better, change the outcome next game, or if the outcome was good, try and repeat that, find that success again. And, and the week was based on that. It's like, okay, flush this game. As a player, Elena, you make a great point. Uh, you have to, like, if you're thinking, if the if the players are thinking about Michigan State right now, like, what the hell would they, what, why? Uh, they got a whole other team to worry about. I get it as a fan's perspective is you just sit there and like, all right, well, it's kind of like we're as good as our last time out. So 
me as a Hawkeye fan for this week is whatever they put on the field on Saturday. And if it wasn't good, I have to just sit with that. Whereas the players, they're already onto the next team worrying about their practice reps from that morning, like stuff like that. I always describe it as this. I don't consider myself a fan of Iowa football. I consider myself in a general sense. Yeah, I'm a fan. I watch Iowa football. I consider myself and how I look at the games, how I process the wins and losses from a former player standpoint, not a fan, not a current player, a former player. And that's how I process it because it's not the same as a fan. Um, I, yeah. I, and, and to some extent that's, you know, like there's probably a lot of people out there who get more excited for Iowa football games than me. Um, more more excited for the tailgate more excited like throughout the week and it's just like i just don't i I'm, i don't know if it's just you know it just is what it is to me i just that's how i process it any thoughts on that yeah good question all right cool we'll move on thanks elena for the question moving forward to the other questions more specifically about the Gophers. All right, here we go. This one is from Rachel. Does the idiotic "We hate Iowa" chant get under the player's skin as much as it no. does mine? <clears throat> no, I love it. It's absolutely tremendous. Fuel on the fire. It, I, like you need something to. I don't know. It gets your heart racing, man. It like makes you a little angry. It's like when you walk out at Iowa State and it's fuck the Hawkeye. I mean, that just, ooh, that gets me going right now, it baby. Makes, Let's go. Dude, it makes your balls tingle. You need that every once in okay, a while. Okay, all right. Um, Yeah, balls tingling. Uh, Yeah, it, it does. It gets the blood boiling a little. Blood boiling in a good way. Like, I'm hype. I'm ready to go. Um, Yeah, so I... I, I think it's cool. I, I love that shit. Um, Mark, are you surprised that Amir Smith Marset gets the start coming off of a suspension? Uh, you know, I think it's standard w- what they've kind of done um, with the coaches. Standard has always been one week, I think, unless it was yeah. two before. But I always thought it was a week. You know, I, to to my knowledge, Amir hasn't done anything to get like a check mark in the doghouse column before this, so. Um, pretty clean record as far as that goes. So not, not really, um, hope he does well. Hope he comes back focused and and ready to play. Hope he learned his lesson, man. You know, Mm -hmm. um, here we go. What else we got? (laughs) This, This one I saw earlier. Do you think given all the, let's call them incidents going on at Iowa that, uh, this is KF's last year. If so, what are your thoughts on who the next coach should be? Bob Stoops question mark urban Meyer. First of all, I don't think urban wants any piece of Kinnick after what we did to him in old 2017. Um, his butt still hurts, dude. Yeah. He, he ain't walking back in there willingly. Uh, plus I don't think he's coached at Ohio state, like the Ohio state. Why would he come to Iowa? Not that I was like a bad job, but Iowa, whenever Kirk leaves is going to be the best job on the market. But I, I just don't think urban would do that. And Bob Stoops, I think he's done with coaching. Um, I think there's a guy that I've heard other people in the podcast Hawkeye blog world talk about. Um, his name is Chris Kleiman. Um, I think he's at Kansas State or something. A lot of people have talked about him being the next head coach. I don't know who he is. I think he's got connections. I have no idea. Hey, but- well, boys, <clears throat> when, when the KF, BF, and – Phil era ends. I might, it might be the end of the Drake, Iowa era. You'll be, you'll be signing off the podcast. At that I point. think I'm signing off dude. Once, once KF and the boy, once it's not Kirk's dogs anymore, I think I got to sign off. Wow. All right, cool. I mean, I, I understand. I, think we got, I, still, I still think we got a few more years left before that happens though. Yeah. I, I don't think it's his last year either. I really don't. Um, let's see. Do we see any of Charlie Jones into the receiver position getting reps, getting reps there? I would Our receivers are sick. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, we're in a spot we're where we're trying to establish more of a run because yeah. we need to not worry so much about now. He could get worked in a little bit in the fancy run game, you know. Yeah. And he did. He got a couple sweeps last week for like 20, 30 some yards, I think. Um, set us up really well in the first possession. 
If this um, Iowa team continues maybe, yeah. to run the ball and focus on that, that's where their offense is going to flourish. Yeah. Kev? I was just going to say, he's doing good on special teams. That's how you find more uh, playing time in offense and defense. Yep. You would know. Um, God, not, I, not really, though. <laughs> hey, you found that start against Northwestern. <laughs> Bro, you started a game at linebacker in the Big Ten, and you played pretty well. So that's more than so many can say. Yeah, that is true. It's yeah. something something I would uh, that I'm envious of. Um, something that I'm envious of, dude. I played in the same game. Yeah. TJ asks, how different will a Friday night game really be? Well, we played on Friday night, um, so it's not that different. The week's better. I mean, it's, it's just gonna me- it's just gonna mess up with the the practice schedule a little bit. But other than that, you know, you you, you play when they tell you to play. Who they yeah. tell you to play again? So yeah. Um, and yeah. I'll tell you what. I think, to my knowledge, Minnesota still runs a four three defense. Correct? Yeah, I don't know. Probably because they used to. Um, no, I think they're more they're three four three four now. Who? Oh, I'm not, I'm a not, short week. On that, a short week with a three-four off or a three-four defense can get a little bit hairy because the IDs are screwed up and the movement is a little bit like more unpredictable. It messes with your mind a little bit more. So the boys got to show up uh, mentally prepared, and we'll see because so far they've been pretty flaky on the preparedness. For sure. Uh, for you two, I'd love to know over under. Tyler Goodson, 15 carries. It's got to be over over that number. I would say with Minnesota's rushing defense, over. over. Yeah, I don't know, uh, but uh, Makai's got to get his touches too. I don't know. It it is tough because we we almost have a committee back there too. And and I kind of like it. Make T good the 60, 70% of the time back, but like, Take a little off him. I mean, Makai and, and Ivory are no are no chumps back there. Like they're doing good work. Um the way that Tyler plays, though, it's yeah. like he the game is a little bit slower to him. It really is. It you really know, is. he like when he just makes things happen that it just doesn't, I don't know. Other people don't. Like he's, Kevin mentioned he's electric. earlier. Electric. Yeah, like, like Kevin mentioned earlier, Minnesota, they've given up some big chunk plays. Well, we got a guy that creates big chunk plays, and that's T. Good. I, I could see like three runs of twenty plus from Tyler this weekend. Um, I really, I mean, I think it would be insane to to. I think I think he's got a, a chance to have a special weekend. I really do. I'd still love to see him take the sleeves off. <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting question to round this out before we go to the awards winners. Um, as most of us know. Our last loss to Minnesota was an ass kicking in 2014. Yes, it sure was. That day sucked. Thanks for bringing it up. And our last loss to Iowa State was also in 2014. What was? Don't the, let them forget it either. Yep. What was the locker room like after those games? And was anything said to help us go on our current winning streak against both programs? No, nah, those locker rooms were pretty fucking quiet. Pretty bad. I remember the. So imagine, so imagine um, walking into the scene of a murder and then going to a room with a bunch of people afterwards. Yeah. I just kind of look at, you know, it's so, it's so odd too, especially on the road because you're trying to put on your travel. I mean, either really either one, you're trying to put on your travel gear back on, you're like pissed. You're looking at everybody else. You're packing your bag. So, I mean, it just feels so em- it's it's a very empty feeling. Um, I always felt so bad for like my parents on road games that we lost because you know after a loss, like I don't want to fucking say a word to anybody about anything. And you know, right. my poor parents either drove five six hours or got on a flight there, and you know they get. 30 minutes with you after the game. And I probably said all 10 words with them that entire time. Yeah. So, uh, it sucks. Okay. It sucks either way, especially trophy games. Um, but no, no one, like there's no big rah, rah speech to, 
No, after, I don't. After a loss, uh, you know, like make you go on a six game win streak versus uh, dude. that team or whatever. That's, you know, and, that's stuff for the movies, man. That don't, that don't really happen. Yeah. You know, in 2017, uh, when we lost to Michigan State. Yes. <clears throat> I was honestly a little bit afraid. Yes in the locker room afterwards that I was going to get my ass whooped by Brian's. Like I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> he was going to beat the shit out of me because in the first half I didn't play very well. And I knew that he was mad. And then he punched the door and broke his hand. And I'm pretty confident that was because me and Brady weren't doing great. And he was kind of counting on us. And, uh, Tough one. and after the game we lost and I'm just like, just dude, lucky. Brian's You're just lucky that he didn't punch your face. Dude, I, I no, but that's the thing because th- we still had a half to play when he punched the door. Mm-hmm. So like we could have turned things around, but then we lost the game uh, in pretty uh, unimpressive fashion. And I was legitimately worried I was getting my ass whooped that day. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I think that's that's good for the questions. Those are good questions this week. Um, obviously, an exciting week. Uh, there's a couple others that I couldn't find that were like, did, did, do people, do you prepare or do you get excited different for trophy games? Um, and I, I think people like prepare. Uh, no, I mean, eh, excited, maybe a little bit. Oh yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I'll definitely say like, if I always got my excitement level for games was kind of based on like how big the game was. Right. So like that, that um that Penn State game that we went into and got our asses whooped, but before at least I was really excited for that one. The Michigan night game, I was excited for that one. Um, you know, like it, you just you're going into West Lafayette at 11 a.m. You're just not as excited, right? But um, preparation is still all the same. Like you, you're you're max prep as much work as you can do, as much film work as you can do, um, and it's never more or less. Uh, if, if that makes sense, let's move on. I don't to... know if I've, I don't know if I've said this before, just real quick before we move on yeah. the, the Michigan game in 2016 felt a little bit biblical, like David versus Goliath in every way. Like yeah. it, it really, to me as just a, a person, somebody who grew up uh Catholic, like it just felt very David and Goliath esque. I would agree. I would agree. And so would the Walmart guy, you know, Kev, <laughs> Uh, Hawks are going to need a prayer this weekend, huh? Going to need a prayer. As we sit there in our Iowa football gear. It's like, we, right, just look, we just fuck looked it. at each other why don't like... You go, why don't you go roll your wheelchair away and fuck off? Yeah, that was incredible. Unbelievable story. Oh, yeah. But that brings us to the old... <laughs> Kevin. We need some winners this week, boys. We need some winners. And I think I got some. I really do. I feel confident in my picks. Again, if you guys... I'm, ha- I'm confident in mine, too. And I'm, I'm hammering some picks, bro. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with... Again, I'm going two and two. All right? Notre Dame just beat Clemson. They're playing Boston College. The line, depending on where you get it at, most looks like most books, you get they got it at 13 and a half. Minus 13 and a half. I'm taking Notre Dame. All right. I think they feel good. I think they're confident. And I'm taking Notre Dame minus two touchdowns. My other college pick is going to be the Wisconsin-Michigan game. I think uh, we we questioned them last week. We kind of talked about it tonight. Michigan could be potentially dog shit. I don't think Harbaugh is going to be there after this season. And I know Wisconsin has had two weeks off. They could be a little rusty, but they will be fresh. I'm taking Wisconsin minus, looks like anywhere between three and a half and four and a half. Give me four and a half. Uh, give me four and a half. I'll take it. Wisconsin minus you four are and a half. Fucking wild, man. Yep. They haven't played since week one. Do they even have a quarterback that can throw the ball? Don't care, baby. Michigan sucks. Woo! This, right. These are <laughs> things you should know before you bet on a team. Uh, no, dude, I just bet on feel. I just bet on feel. <laughs> and that's he was a maniac, dude. Lesson. I love it. Fuck it. You know? And then, uh, so Notre Dame over. Hashtag um, Fade Kluver. Chill Fade out, Kluver. Kev. Dude, Fade it's a good bet. Kluver. It's a good bet. This is not betting advice, but if it was, it'd be a great bet. 
moving on to the NFL, I'm taking the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow, Joey Buckets versus the Pittsburgh. I'm taking the over in this game. Over 46 and a half points. Because I think Joey Buckets can score. And we know that the Steelers are good. They have good defense. I don't um, is big is Big Ben playing this week? I, I don't care. Put Duck Hodges in. I don't give a shit. Oh my God. See <laughs> I feel bad for anyone that has ever bet on one of the things you tell them to bet on. Let's go. With uh Pitt and Cincinnati over 46 and a half. And then my other pick. I I had to double take at this one and maybe there's something I don't know happening in this game either, but they got the Cardinals minus one and a half against the bills. And All that. I'm taking the bills. Give me the bills plus one and a half. Those are my picks. You got anything to say about that one, Kevin? Uh, I mean, it's, that's a pick. I mean, okay. All right. Drake. Uh, do you want me to go or do you want Kevin to go since he's been a little better? I don't care. You're, we'll you're, both you're both going to go, right. Drake. You can go. So, I wanted to take that Buffalo pick, but since you took it, I'm going to let you have it. It's okay. yours. Right. Give me Philly minus three against the Giants because I don't even need to say it. Giants blow. Give me, the city of New York. No. Give me. Tampa Bay minus four and a half against Carolina. Tom's coming back. He's having a better week. Like this happened early in the season, had a bad week, came back, crushed it. Give me Tommy and the boys. Give me is, um, Cleveland. Is McCaffrey out? I, yes, I McCaffrey's out with a shoulder. Oh, McCaffrey's out. out with a shoulder. Okay. What was that line? Uh, that's it a, was that's Tampa Bay thing. minus four and a half. Four and a half. It okay. was on points bet. Yep. Okay. Then give me Cleveland minus three against Houston. Houston is just a bunch of dipe shitters, and I feel bad for Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt. They don't deserve no. this, but Cleveland can cover three points. Um, also, Nick Chubb is back, so their rushing attack is going to be pretty sick. True. Those are your three? So, got – no, no, I got more. I really wanted to take that Buffalo pick, but take I'm going to let you have – nope, you have it. Give me Seattle – plus two against LA. I don't know what this line is. I don't know what's going on. It's in LA. Who cares? Uh, Russell Wilson can cover two points again, or can, can get two points yeah. and cover that against the Rams. That's interesting. Uh, okay. And well, then what can the, uh, Seattle's defense do though? That's God, true, but I, so I'm not, bad. I'm not all in. Listen, I'm not all in. <laughs> so bad. I'm Dude, not all in Jared. on Jared Goff I, Okay, real quickly. No, I don't think uh, anybody's all in on Jared Goff. A stat on Seattle's pass defense. They are giving up uh, 379 pass yards a game or something like that. First in the – most in the league. The next worst team is Atlanta, who's giving up like 319. They're giving up more pass yards to any – by any other team – by 60 to second place. It's incredible. I could yeah, throw touchdowns bad. on them. It is anyway. bad. Tough, tough week to have traded Robert Woods one night again. Yeah, true. Um, and one then one my one last one, I hate to say it, I hate to do it, but New Orleans minus nine against San Francisco. San Francisco is literally not fielding a real NFL roster. They have $80 million on – I are. I don't know how I didn't pick them last week. Kluver, you're smart. I'm an idiot. Yep. That pick is probably just a super lock. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of those right there. Uh, so five picks from Drake this week. Uh, Kevin, what do we got going? Well, first of all, Zach Johnson to win the Masters. That's the pick. Zach Johnson to win the Masters, baby. Let's go. Uh, yes, I got Zach Johnson at plus 10,000. Let's go. 10,000? 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. So $5 to win 500. Big fan of that. Set. Big fan of that. Set. I think our boy Zach Johnson is going to do really well in the first ever November's Masters. Yeah. Uh, moving on to college football. Shit. What the hell am I bet on? <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, I really like these sets. I feel pretty good about them. So okay. starting off, 11 a.m. game. Illinois versus Rutgers, like the over on 52. Okay. Rutgers can put some points up. Rutgers can give some points up. Illinois, yeah, they can put some points up too. Uh, 
But yeah, Rutgers put up four touchdowns versus uh, Ohio, Ohio State. State. So I like there'd be some, I like there'd be some points uh, scored in this game. Uh, moving out west, I got Oregon minus ten versus Washington State. Uh, Oregon had a big win versus Stanford last week. Washington State with a close win over Oregon State last week. Um, I think Oregon's defense is so much better than what Wazoo faced last week that uh, the 10 points is going to come easy. And then this is my lock of the week. This might be my lock of the year. I love Northwestern minus two and a half versus Purdue. Wow. Love it. Wow. Love it. I think, I just think they're, they are a much better team. Uh, offensively, pretty, pretty similar, but I think, Northwestern has the advantage with Peyton Ramsey. I think he gives that offense exactly what it needs with a mobile quarterback. And then defensively, Northwestern is, is, is much better than Purdue, I think. So give me Northwestern. I think they win this game by a touchdown, if not more. That is interesting. All right. Well, there you have it. Kevin gives you the lock of potentially the century uh, in his eyes. Um, and scrutinized almost every single one of my picks. Uh, that's going to do it. 162. We're playing for pig, baby. I We better bring Floyd back. We better bring Floyd back. That's all I'm saying. Bacon for breakfast on Saturday. Uh, that's it. We'll be talking at you on Sunday. If you're a part of the Patreon, look for the quick reaction pod on Friday night. Glad to have you as always. Walk-ons out.